Welcome to my Chill and Barrel overview. I have this review separated into four parts. First, we're going to physically look at the bore the way it came from the factory. Second, we're going to look at how well it did with some Black Hills Mark 262 ammo, as well as the chronograph tests. Specifically, I was looking to see if this barrel sped up after 100 or so rounds. Then we're going to get into some hand loading, where specifically we test 52 grain Nosler Custom Competitions, as well as 69 grain Nosler Custom Competition. Also, there's a primer test with the 52 grains. When we look inside the bore, and forgive the shaky camera, we don't see anything but excellence. The lands look great, the chamber looks great, the chamber actually looks a little bit polished. And you're going to have to forgive as the lighting adjusts with the camera, the borescope. The black that you see, and this is not high pressure tested, this is not fire tested at all. That is from the lead lapping that they do when they hand lap this barrel. It's a button pulled barrel, high quality, hand lapped, then air gauged. AR barrels do not come in the select match grade line, but they do come match grade. And here you can see, I find some things that it looks like it might be some scrapes, but honestly, it was probably from some previous inspection of it. I didn't find anything physically wrong with this barrel. There's the gas port. It looks nice and clean. I'll have to put a link in the upper right of what I saw when I looked at my Wilson Combat. And here, here's looking at the inside of the crown. Look how shiny things are. The build quality overall is very impressive with this barrel. It's right up there with proof research. This is with the 90 degree mirror attached. And you'll notice that the blackness from the lead lapping, it's not quite as visible from this view. But we're taking a look at the lands, specifically the leads, and everything looks fairly even as we rotate around. The lands and grooves look very uniform very even. You can see the vertical striations that go with the grain, or I'm sorry, with the bore. That is from the lead lapping. You don't see any chatter marks. You don't see any things from the button. You do see some things here and there. Detritus, I guess I'll go ahead and say. Who knows what that's from. And here's the crown with the 90 degree thing. Things look almost perfect, and you can see where I kind of pause and look at things for a little bit. That's me thinking I'm seeing some tiny burrs. Thankfully, that is not the case. What we're seeing here is some leftover lead from the lapping. Once I put some Hoppies number 9 through it, let it soak for a little bit, ran some patches through, those disappeared. Everything's good. Oh, and we almost forgot to take a look at the gas port. So here we go, it's very finely drilled. You do see maybe a, a slight bit of burring here or there that could be left over from the lead lapping as well. Either way, very well drilled. It does go over a land. Some people say that's bad, but this is a six screw barrel. There's really no avoiding it. Also, personally, I haven't noticed a difference from where the gas port is drilled in terms of accuracy. As we move on to the Mark 262 testing, I want to point out this is the ejection pattern that we have, kind of a three o'clock in between three and four. And these are the groups that I managed to achieve with it, specifically the ones marked, roughly about an inch, certainly better than the Shaw Custom Barrel I tested. Okay, five shots with this 262 ammo. Take a look, average. 2804. Not terrible. And this is my shilling barrel. Okay, so I just got done firing that Black Hills uh, Mark 262. This is after about 100 rounds. The temperature is 10 degrees warmer than when I first fired these, but it's just as windy same direction and the barometric pressure is the same so that's about as similar of testing I ideals i can get anyway average 2831 whereas previously i believe it was 2804 
So yeah, we have a slight increase in speed. Do note, however, so this is after firing 50 rounds. Yeah, 50 rounds, not cleaning the barrel. But the first time was 20 rounds without cleaning the barrel, but it was the first time it had ever been fired. So, who knows? Uh, maybe just in a bit I have to buy another box and test it again. So high, 2850, low, 2803. Standard deviation 11, which isn't bad. Extreme spread 41. That seems worse than before. So that was the last shot. 2829, 2832, 2850, and that was the first shot. Interesting. Okay. Welcome back, gents. It's a deceptively cold day out, but here we go, finally. The last of my initial testing with my Schillen barrel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the engraving here. Focus. Schillen 223 Remington Wild. This is a 20 inch stainless steel barrel, button pulled, hand lapped with an adjustable gas block by Superlative Arms. You might be able to see it there if it focuses correctly. We have a Veltor upper with a new Frontier Armory billet lower that I put together myself, a Timney 75th anniversary trigger with a three pound pull, forgive the wind, and a BCM Mark II rifle length buffer tube. And then finally, an Amend 2 stock, which I really like here, along with an Amend 2 grip, just to give those a shout out. And then finally, this is a Swamp Fox Kentucky long range scope that goes from 5 to 30 with the 56 millimeter objective lens. First focal plane, I think I mentioned that, and God, God, what else? It's totally overkill for what we're doing, which is 100 yards here. And what are we doing today? A lot of things. So first off, in a previous video, I had tested this barrel with 52 grain Nosler Custom Competition. So we're redoing that. So we're retesting 52 grain Nosler Custom Competitions with TAC. But we're going to be doing a primer test with the Remington 9.5s, CCI 41s, and then our Rueg primers, just to have three distinctly different primers. I do also have some Winchester 41s, but not loaded up currently. Maybe we'll do that in a different video, but those are actually rather similar to the CCI 41s. Anyway, same load development, gross increments of 0.5 grains going from 25 to 27 grains with an overall length of 2.260. That's mag length. What'd I miss? Oh, uh, to keep everything uniform, this time I did use a different die. I realized I just contradicted myself, but I wanted to be sure, and I wanted to use more of a standard die, not a Matchmaster die, not an X die, just a standard basic die. So I used my Lyman die set. Yes, I'm one of those crazy people that not only tests a bunch of different barrels, but a bunch of different dies too. That's what this channel's all about. After that, we have over here, some 69 grain Nosler Custom Competitions. And again, we are using TAC. We're going from 22 and a half to 24 and a half. The last group here, I only have three shots for that string. That's because I lost a piece of brass. This is just Lake City brass that are reloads proper from all the, uh, actually, from this. The Black Hill stuff, which is the last thing we're gonna test today. Previously, when this barrel was new, after firing about 20 rounds through it, I tested the speed of this. This is Mark uh, 262 Mod 1C. And out of this barrel, a 20 inch stainless steel barrel again, it was going about 2800 feet per second. We're gonna see if the barrel speeds up because once I'm done with all these, I will have approximately 100 and, well 120, I'm sorry. So after 120 rounds, that's Total, that just the ones here, of course. That'll be a good time to test the velocity of those. I will not have time to clean the barrel. So if that's gonna affect things, so be it. But the weather and the conditions are actually fairly similar to when I tested it previously. And again, the approximate speed was 2,800 feet per second. I think I covered everything there. So 
let me attach my brass catcher and get things sighted in because again 100 yards and we're gonna see how well we do quick primer check while we're done firing our rounds and hopefully you can see them okay with the glare these are the Remington nine and a halfs and you can see this is the top charge and it's perfectly round it's fine whoops these are the CCI 41s the top charge might be slightly flattened but still perfectly fine the Rueg primers you can see maybe kind of flattened more so than the lower charges but still more or less fine let's go check our targets okay gents 52 grain nozzle competition propelled by tack so quick caveat i messed up on the ccis you'll see when i get to them but top row is going to be remington nine and a half middle row will be ccis and rueg will be the bottom row and furthermore three shot groups so let's get to the interpretations and again forgive the wind so remington nine and a halfs Lowest charge, 25 grains. This is probably the worst group of the day, both because of the extreme vertical, but also because this is like a little over an inch, inch and a quarter, I guess we'll go ahead and say. Huge shift the point to impact down, but note that things are still harmonically level here. So there's nothing too grotesque about this. Slight shift in the point to impact up. Things might even open up a little bit, but otherwise more or less the same. Two and one staying about the same point to impact and then the final charge right there things kind of go up even about and maybe go back down nothing terrible about that nothing to write home about these are actually you know i'm i'm not being fair actually these are all great because the majority of these groups are under an inch nearing a half inch center to the center so this is actually really good but well you'll see as we go on so here's our row of CCI, and you'll see immediately what I meant by I messed up on the CCIs. Long story short, I fired these ones first. I looked at my reloading tray. I had three more of the fire, so I just loaded them in, and I used some Kentucky windage and also the hash marks on the scope and just did one over, and there you go. There's our group. So it's not going to be a nice, easy read, but we'll just go with it. Again, kind of this weird, even three-shot group, not vertical, but diagonal. Our second shot, almost like a two and one. Third shot, kind of the same. And then, yeah, our last group definitely tightens up. This is definitely under a half inch. Range Buddy will save the day. Well, it'll tell us. Some people are not going to like the verticality there, but I'm still pretty proud of that group, especially out of an AR platform. Now, oh, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention is look how steady point of impacts are in general there's no huge dips like in here uh, this huge dip down kind of stays level across this yes you have some movement but it's not as extreme that's why we do primer tests so lastly here's the ruag the first group right there then we have another huge dip down well not a huge dip but it is a pretty big dip and also nothing lines up harmonically this is a pretty decent group this is a pretty decent group but you have that two and one kind of aspect going on here same with this we're starting to get a little bit higher and we have our verticality there however kind of lines up with the maximum charge of what we have with the cci primers and then when we get to the final charge which is 27 grains so this is 27 this is 27 this is 27 things fall apart and considering the fact oh big gust of wind so considering that things started to fall apart here after getting really, really a decent group here, and also we had slightly flattened primers here, I think that's why we're falling apart. I think we're over pressure proper here. Anyway, there you go. There's our primer test done with TAC and 52 grain CCIs. And good job, Shillin, because only a few of these groups are over an inch. That's fantastic. That's great. Okay, Nasser Custom Competitions with Lake City Brass Rueg Primers. Overall length is mag length. And we're propelled by TAC. So, minimum charge here. A lot of verticality. It's double grouping. This is a four-shot group. 
then we kind of get a nice even group here huge shift of point impact down and look harmonically stays the same with that over here we have some horizontalness otherwise point impact is roughly the same then we get to some verticality here and otherwise a drop of the point impact and then our maximum charge 24.5 things go down and this is only a three shot group so we can see a general trend of going down which is actually something we do want to see and honestly if i were to load up just for plinking or just for something a little bit reliable i would aim for right here and then do some seating depth te tests to see what we could do to change the nature of these groups if, if possible because this definitely won't want to stay away from and this isn't much better this i kind of like this Anyway, um, also these groups, although nothing to write home about, they're still roughly about an inch. This one is definitely slightly over, along with this one, I think, just barely. So nothing spectacular, but nothing terrible. So overall, I've been pretty pleased with the shillin' barrel, especially since apparently getting almost half-inch groups is pretty much the norm and almost easy. What are my final closing thoughts on this shillin' barrel? Well, here's the biggest and most important one. The extra money that I spent on a quote-unquote quality brand name I actually felt like was worth it. The build quality was excellent, and the performance was definitely an increase over other brands I've tried, and was above the curve. I can't necessarily say it scaled with cost, and I was a little bit disappointed with how well it did with the Mark 262 ammo, but that's just going to lead us to our next video where I'm going to have to try 77 grain match kinks.